is it recording oh hello oh <laughs> i guess it is recording. all right hello welcome to the toronto bible study podcast and today we have our special guest dylan hausler of um america i guess and uh florida we're, we're here to oh you're from florida okay nice yeah. nice love that place um okay so we're gonna re- we're gonna talk today about the question of whether jesus is god that's our that's our sort of debate topic but we don't really have a formal debate structure going on so we're just going to have a discussion just a friendly discussion about this controversial subject um dylan so just tell me about yourself a little bit before we get into this uh well i started professing like real faith in christ maybe it was in august of 2021 right so we're coming up on two years uh a lot of people think that's a really short time to be a Christian, which, I mean, compared to, to all of the uh, testimonies and walks of, of Christians all throughout the world. Yeah, I mean, some people have been Christians for 10 years, 20 years. But, um, you know, we we're talking a little bit before we started recording. We were talking about Tulip, right? right. And, we were talking, and we know Tulip goes into election and predestination and stuff. And I'm a firm believer and. Jesus Christ said, many are called, few are chosen. Um, And I know I'm chosen by God. So I think that those one and a half years that I have been professing uh, faith in Christ, I've actually been taught by the Lord and by men who the Lord has used, um, which is why I'm fully convinced that I have sound doctrine Mm -hmm. and uh, that I have the anointing to be uh, coming on here and speaking and contending for the faith. So, uh, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Now I'm just obviously I'm I'm hoping to convince you and whoever else watches that Jesus is not the most high God, you know, that he isn't God the father. And and we'll see where it goes. Well, well, that's the thing. So we may not be that far apart then if that's the case. Well, so let's talk about the position. So my position is that. It's along the lines of the of the so-called Trinity doctrine, right? So in that in that view, Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit are co-equal. Yes, co-equal. They're all they're all three different persons in one Godhead or or one God, one essence of God. Okay, and so. Yeah, Jesus is co-equal with God, but then at the same time, there is this understanding that in his form, in his in his role as a man, in his role in his um, because as a as the son, he has two natures. He has his nature as God, this God the Son, and his nature as a man. You know, God a man, or, or I guess I don't know. I guess he's just a man in that nature. So. In that sense, in his nature as a man, he is he is like subordinate to God the Father, you know. But as God the Son, they're all co-equal. That's the idea. Okay. Now, yeah. How does that fit with your system? So I reject the dual nature stuff that he is that he has like a God nature and uh, I guess a human nature. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe that Jesus Christ only has a human nature. Or at least when he was, yeah, I would say he has the nature of a man. You know, he came in the likeness of a man, right? He was a servant. He had perfect flesh, right? So I guess that's where we can get. Obviously, he came, he was the word made flesh, right? So that's the divinity that he has, right? Because he was with the father before the world was as the word of God. Mm -hmm. The word is made flesh. Once he's flesh, I don't believe that he has any sort of... uh, you know, Trinitarians will try to say he has two, uh, like a divine will and then like a human will. I believe that he only has a human will, but he also knows what the will of the father is. And he chooses to deny his own will and fulfill the will of the father. So I believe that Jesus Christ was fully man. But what made him seem as if he's fully God also is the fact that he has perfect flesh, that he has no sin in him. And, mm-hmm. and this is why he says, um, before he's he's going up to get crucified while he's praying with the disciples he says the ruler of this world cometh and he has nothing in me and i believe that's talking about sin jesus had no sin in him 
Mm-hmm. Right? I believe when he went out to the wilderness to be tempted by Satan, Satan didn't tempt him internally, but Satan tempted him from the outside of him because Satan had no place in Jesus Christ whatsoever. So that's what I believe in regards to that. And in terms of the co-equality, I don't think equality comes from essence, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think, um, I don't think that the Holy Ghost being divine or Jesus being divine and the Father, I don't think that divinity, that substance that we can say that they're made of is what makes them equal or what makes them God. I believe that equal, what makes someone equal all has to do with authority, right? Mm-hmm. So the Father sends the Son and the Father sends the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost never sends the Father and the Son never sends the Father. It's the Father sending them. They never send the Father. So I believe and Jesus Christ said, he who uh, sends is greater than he who is sent, right? And he says, my father is greater than I. So in the sense that the father is greater than the son in terms of authority and power, mm-hmm. that's that's how I view it. So I wouldn't call them co-equal um, because the father is greater than the son. Uh, I know right. Trinitarians, they try to make that co-equal argument by applying it to, to essence, to divinity. Mm-hmm. But I think that's completely wrong. I think it all has to do with authority because what makes God, God is not his essence. It's the fact that he sits on the throne and he has all power and authority to create. That's what makes God, God, right? He's the, that, author. That, they would say that's part of his essence, like his essence, like being the thing that makes him who he is. Right. So we are essentially humans well, that's our our essence is that we're human you know so we so the things that make us human are you know whatever i don't know well our, that's our this, genetics or yeah go ahead what what if god were we know god is a spirit right because jesus says god is spirit what mm-hmm. if god were a flesh like us but he was just in a heavenly uh heavenly flesh and what if he were sitting on would he no longer be god what if he had the same flesh as us I don't know. I mean, if he gave himself that flesh, yeah, I guess he would be just, uh, a, he would still be God in the flesh, right? That's what, that's what Jesus is to us, right? Right. He's God but, in the flesh. But we'd be flesh just as he is. So because we share that same substance that the father has, would we be God as well? No, because we wouldn't be the same in essence. Like only he could... Only he he has the ability to create us, to, to destroy us, you know, to forgive our sins, etc. You know what I mean? So yeah, but now now we're good. talking about power and authority, right? That's not essence. No, it is. It is part of his essence. His power and authority is also part of his essence. You know, it's like it's it's like these essential things. Essential meaning like if it's essential to you, right? It's something that if we take it away, you're not you're no longer you. You know, like you're, you're, you are who you are, Dylan. If we take away your name, you're no longer Dylan, you know? So then, so then, or maybe that wouldn't be a good example, but no. if we took out your brain, right? We took away, if, would... we, if we just, Dylan had no longer a brain. Dylan, that, that, that thing, whatever's left there in your body, that's no longer Dylan, you know? It's just a body. But Dylan would still exist. Dylan, like your soul would still exist. Those things are your essence, you know? They're part of your essence, you know what I mean? That's, that's, yeah, that's but, what essence is. Yeah, but is God... I'm trying to think now because is God a... Because I agree that the soul is who we are, right? Mm-hmm. So when, when I say to Michael, I believe that I'm actually talking to the soul. It's not necessarily the flesh. It's not necessarily the body, right? Like if our dead bodies were in a coffin, right? We know that the soul has departed from it. It would be weird to say that's Dylan. It's like, no, Dylan, like the soul has departed from that body. This is now just an empty shell of who he was. Mm -hmm. Um, But when it comes to God, I I don't equate God to being his essence. I I would not say that it's his essence. I would say God is, I would say God is the, is a, a title that he has rightfully so as being the creator i believe that god is the creator i believe you in order to be god you have to be the almighty creator yeah. right it's, well, what makes you the creator is 
is what makes you a creator your essence or is what, is what makes you uh, a creator the fact that you have the power to create no, right? i would say i would say the fact that he is the creator is part of his essence there you know what i mean the same way you're saying you're saying that what makes god god is that he is the creator and so that is part of his essence you know so anything that can anything that's like that anything where you say this is what makes god god anything like that is part of his essence you understand well, does yeah does jesus have the same essence as the father i would say he does yeah like for example he seems to be the creator according to the scripture you know like say for example um john 1 verse 3 uh, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Yeah. All things were made by him. I, by I, him. I, I interpret by as meaning through. I don't interpret by as meaning he's the one doing the creating. I interpret by as meaning through as in God created everything by his son or God created everything through his son, which is his word. Right? Mm -hmm. Because when God speaks... Right. When he speaks the word, it, things are created. When he said, let there be light, there was light. Right. So he spoke it. And through that word that proceeded forth from him, light was created. So that's how I perceive by some people. A lot of people want to say that by means that uh, Jesus was the actual mind behind the creation, doing the creating. But I disagree because that would be like saying uh, the word created everything through the word. And I don't think that makes sense. I believe it was God, the father who created everything through his word. So I believe that me, God, the father is the mind that's creating. And then it's through his word. Okay. I hope you don't mind if I just bring this, this Bible. Yeah, that's me. fine. Okay. So, all right. Why, why should we, okay. In the beginning was the word. The word was, was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Why? All things were made by him. Why does? Why would I assume that that means God made it through him? I'm pretty. Is, I'm pretty sure there's a scripture that says God created everything through His word. Mm, yeah, let yeah me that's possible. That's on. possible. But just just deal with this one. Yeah, I think there is a scripture similar to what you're saying, and we could get to that in a minute. But yeah, just look at that right there. What is that? What's that? What's the problem? I mean, my problem with what you're saying is that it just seems to say that they were made by him. Well, I perceive by is meaning through, and that makes a difference, right? Because all things, we, but it doesn't say it doesn't say all things were made through him. It just no, says I, all things were made by him. Yeah, right? I, so. I I say by means through, and that's just that's just a point of contention, right? All things were I, made. I can't. Yeah, like I can't make you read all things were made by him. I can't uh -huh. make you think that by means through, right? All I can do is go to other scriptures that say, okay, you know what? If you think that all things were made by him, meaning that the word made all things right? The mm -hmm. word uh, made all things through, through the word. Then I got to try to find a way to make you realize, okay, well, maybe this doesn't make as much sense as, as it seemed to have, to have made here, right? All I can do is try to go to other scriptures and show you, well, that stance actually contradicts what it's saying here. But, but this is what I'm saying though. My question to you would be like, why you have to actually change the word here. You have to well, take the, the word that's not there. Well, the word's not changing because I believe by means through, right? So the word's not actually um, changing. We just perceive the meaning of by as being as, as two different definitions. You understand? Yeah, right? I guess by sometimes the word by, but you know what? When, when we say, when we, when we just make a simple statement, Dylan uh, or this debate or whatever, I don't know, like, I don't know. Well, let Dylan's me give you breakfast today was made by him. Yeah. When you made your, when you made your breakfast, it was made by you. Right. Yeah. Not, it's not talking about through you. It's just saying it's made by you. So yeah, but similarly, I if I say all things were made by Jesus, it sounds like I'm just saying he made them. Right. But what, what, what were we going to say? Yeah. I can give an example of by meaning through. 
It's like, oh, I got to the island by the bridge, right? That mm -hmm. means I went through the bridge. I went over, I drove over the bridge to get there, right? So by can mean through as well. It, it can, just, it can, it can, it can. But wrong? then the general, but that's like, again, that's like, the context gives us the meaning there. The context tells us that he, we don't think that you you went to the bridge. <laughs> like like we understand when you when you when you say you went to the bridge, you went to the island by the bridge. We understand what you mean there because of the context. You went to the island that way. That's how you went there. Yeah. But now so we're I'm here. Gonna... We're here, sir. Yeah, so now we just got to look at other scriptures, right? Because if you are not, if you perceive by as being um, like he's the one doing the creating, he's the mind behind it. And I say, no, this actually means through, right? I read this as all things were made through him. You you read this as all things were, were created by him as in like he's the mind doing it. Now we got to go to other scriptures to see how this fits because th there's no way for us to look at John uh, 1, 3 in isolation. And then reach an agreement on that. We've got to take the full counsel of scriptures. We've got to go to others and we got to see, okay, one, one of us is wrong, right? So at some point, some way, somehow, at the stance that we have is going to be contradicted by a different scripture, right? And then at once, once our stance is contradicted by scripture, you know, we, we have, we should denounce it, right? If not, mm -hmm. then, then. It's not too good, right? We can go to John 1.1 1, 1, because I know John 1.1 1, 1 is one of the favorite verses for Trinitarians, but uh, it, it just doesn't, it's it's not logically consistent with their... Well, well, uh, well okay, well, what are you going to do with John 1.1 1, 1, then? Well, John 1.1, 1, 1, we can <clears throat> just, we can ask, who is God? Hmm. Well, the word is god apparently according to this right so is this see that's why with the trinitarian idea we can we can explain this verse but without the trinitarian idea it's hard to explain it how is the word it says the word was god yeah the word was I, god yeah when i so when i see that the word was god it just means that the word actually proceeded forth from god it just means the word uh was of god or came from god right because and I don't, I really don't like to go into the Greek. Like I, I prefer to just stick to English. I know some people really love to get into the Greek and stuff, but mm -hmm. I mean, just for the, just for the sake of this, this conversation, right. God is translated to Theos and Theos mm -hmm. is not always, uh, Theos does not always mean it, it's not always used in the same, uh, it's the, the definition for Theos is not always used to mean like creator. Right. Sometimes Theos is just used to say that something came forth from God. And we know Jesus came forth from God. He says it multiple times. And in, in this gospel, right, you believe that I proceeded forth and came from God. Um, so that's so when I say uh, when I look at the word was God, I'm like, oh, that just means the word proceeded forth from God, came from God. He's, he's of that same essence. Now, other people will read it and say, oh, no, this is clearly saying that the word is God because it says that the word was God. And I'm mm -hmm. like, OK, well, that's not logically consistent. Right. Because this is why I ask, who is God? Right. And if a Trinitarian says God is the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, then I should be able to plug this, plug that in and make this make sense. And then we have in the beginning was the word. And the word was with the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. And the word was the father and uh, the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. And that doesn't make any sense. No, why does it have to, why does it have to go into all that detail? I mean, right, right now, he's not talking about the whole Trinitarian complex, right? He's just talking about this thing. He's talking about Jesus and the father and trying to make us understand that they're the same. Or that's the way I read it, right? So he says the word was God. Now, you're saying that this word was God actually means the word proceeded from God, the Father, you mean, I guess, right? When, so, when, when we see, yeah, when we see the word was God, all that's saying is that the word actually came out of God, proceeded forth from God. It's not actually saying that the word is God, the Father himself. That, no, he's just saying he's, he's of God. He is of God. Which I agree but, but, with why, but why God. why would why okay okay that's fine but why why would why would I like conclude why would I draw that conclusion from these words 
Even in the Greek. The Greek here is, this is and, okay, Kai. This is Theos, God, right? This is like was, you know? This word, uh, hey, hein, or ain, sorry. Uh, it's, like, it's like was. And then the word, the word, halogo, halagos, okay? Yeah. So what part of this lead, would lead me to believe that it actually means proceeded from God or something like that? Well, well, why, why would I say that? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, two things. One, Jesus Christ's words himself. He says he proceeded forth and came from God. And that's that's exactly how he describes it. I'm not uh, I'm not adding to that. He literally says I proceeded forth and came from God. Yeah, um, but that 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 could that could be just again the um the man part of him. The the that part of his nature, right? No, cuz he no, cuz he's right here. Yeah, yeah, it proceeded from God like the Holy Spirit came Matthew 1, Matthew chapter 1, right? The Holy Spirit did something in Mary, and then that's how he proceeded from God into Mary, and then I'll he was that. born, right? Yeah, but okay. Jesus is, uh, in John three sixteen. he's the uniquely begotten Son of God. So he was begotten by God, which does mean he proceeded forth. He came out of him, right? And he was not be begotten. Says, begotten means, what does, be, what does begotten mean? It means like, you know, like it's, is that what begotten means? I don't I'm, know. I'm, I'm begotten means like, begotten means like, it's like when you have a child, right? It's like you beget, you beget a child, right? So that's it, what it, they mean by that. Came forth. Mm, yeah, okay. You can see that it's coming forth. Okay. Yeah. So, so let's say that's the truth. Then that's still talking about Jesus as a man. That's not talking no. about him. No, because it says he sent his only begotten son. He was begotten before he was birthed as a man. He sent his only. All right, let's take a look at that one. John 3.16, right? Yeah. He gave his only begotten son. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. So you're saying this gave thing comes before he was this gave part is um yeah I'm saying before, yeah, I'm saying oh, I'm saying ahead, he was, yeah. yeah I'm saying he was begotten before his incarnation as Jesus of Nazareth right he was I'm, begotten before the incarnation okay that's fine whatever but the the gave part um the gave part could have come anytime it could have come even when he was on the cross or whatever the gave part doesn't we don't know what that refers to exactly when did he give his son you know well it said but the word know... made flesh and it also says that he's the lamb slain before the foundation of the world so he was actually slain before the earth was even formed yeah yeah that's true that's kind of like that's also whatever that is that i'm just saying how does this show that how does this what are you trying to say about this again you're trying to say that this proves that he was not um i'm yeah i'm gonna i'm using this verse to say that he proceeded forth from god right that he was mm -hmm. begotten and this yeah. isn't this isn't uh attributed to his incarnation as jesus of nazareth i'm saying that this was he was begotten. He proceeded forth from God before the foundation of the world. I'm saying he literally came out f from God the Father. He he proceeded forth from God. He the was be he was begotten. Yeah. Okay. Maybe let's say let's say that's true. He was begotten before the foundation of the world. Okay. Yes. He was begotten, right? Yeah. But whatever that means, that doesn't mean that he was. A created being or that he I was agree not... with that. I don't I don't believe Jesus Christ. I believe as it says here, he was begotten. And as okay. Jesus says, he proceeded forth. And I believe that being begotten and being created are two different things. Right? Okay. Because in order for him to be created, well, he's the word and everything was created through him. So that makes no sense, right? The word didn't create the word. No, the mm -hmm. word just proceeded forth from the mouth of the father. Just like our words, Michael, are coming out of us uh, and proceeding forth from our mouth, right? Mm -hmm. The word proceeded forth from God. That's how. 
yeah okay so but the the word the word the word is like a title i don't know if the fact that it's that he's called the word no, does not imply true. that yeah it it might be but you'd have to prove that it seems to be a title based on what we read there you know or what, well, or what why why should i think that this is not that this is uh not just a title well because the word was made flesh right and the word was made flesh the word was the made word. flesh but but we we already discussed that it's like the mere fact that he was made flesh at one time in history doesn't mean that he was created or anything like that right well, so he's he not was... created he's begotten that's yeah I, okay, I, reject, okay. I reject the claim that he was uh he was created i say he was he was begotten he proceeded forth from god the father everything was created through him and once again this is why i go back to genesis Look. He said, let there be light, and there was light. See how he spoke those words, and then mm -hmm. light was created? Right? He created yeah. through his word, through, through through speaking it. Yeah, 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 a lot of people say that, right? That's interesting, but, I mean, he didn't, he didn't create everything just by speaking. He created the heaven and the earth without speaking. No, he did, but we don't actually see him speaking you know, heaven and earth into existence. He didn't say, let there be, well, maybe he said, let there be heaven. I don't know. Maybe, but we don't know, know what he actually said to create the heavens and the earth. But they were created. So we know that Jesus was, was part of that as well. Yeah, he was, was before, created. he was before all creation. I, I believe that completely. Here's what I believe. Before even the, be I believe the beginning came mm -hmm. to be Mm -hmm. the the second the nanosecond that god the father spoke that that word proceeded forth from his mouth the beginning came to be that's what i believe okay okay right, so, so whenever the, the word whenever the word first proceeded forth from god the uh, beginning starts god is before the beginning he, he has no beginning he he's just he's just totally everlasting totally endless beginning right. comes to be once the word uh proceeds forth from god and then but jesus jesus doesn't have a bit so you're saying jesus has a beginning is that what you're saying yeah that is okay the son okay, has okay. a beginning that's what i believe but we have a we have a scripture there's a scripture where it says that he is um from eternal from eternal from everlasting right yeah that's, that's I, that that's i agree with that that's a uh, micah 5 2 yeah, Micah five two says his goings forth is from uh, from old, from everlasting, right? And that goings forth is what we're talking about, right? Proceeding forth, uh, begotten. That's what that is. Now, if you're begotten, you have to have a beginning. If you're begotten, it's not possible, right? God the Father is not begotten; He has no beginning. But you and I are begotten. We have beginnings. Everything was begotten. It has a beginning, right? Whose goings forth? If He came out of something. At some point, he came out of something. No, no, no. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean that his goings forth, wherever he goes forth. From he goes forth from from wherever he is, right? He goes forth. He goes right. back. He goes wherever he wants. Right. But he's just he's going. He's going somewhere. Right. They've no, been no. there from old from everlasting. Yeah, no, his goings forth, that's his begetting, right? Then that lines up with what Jesus from says. From everlasting, from everlasting. Yeah, but everlasting is just from, from days of antiquity. This was before everything was, this is before the heaven and the earth. This was before all. Uh, everlasting sounds like it's before. Everlasting sounds like eternity. Right. So there is no beginning to it. You know, it's from everlasting. It's from before. It's from eternity, like God, like like God, the father. You know, well, 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 Jesus Christ is eternally forward, but he's not eternally backward. Right. Because to say that he got, he had he has a uh, that he was begotten and to say that he's etern uh, co-eternal with the father those that's just a, an oxymoron. Right. You can't be begotten and not have a beginning it's not possible no no because he could be he could be eternal as god the son and then begotten as well the there's son. no god well god the son's not in scripture 
that's I, I searched the whole New Testament. No, no, sure, that's true. Of course, that's just a doctrine. It's a doctrine that we that we kind of come up with from scripture, yeah. right? So it depends on our interpretation of the scriptures that we come up with these doctrines, right? But um, okay, okay, okay. So let's 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 review a little bit here from from First John. Based on this, you're saying that the word was God. This phrase, the word was God, means the word came forth from God, right? Yes, correct. Okay, so let's put that over here for now. And then let's try to, let's try to establish that. What you're saying is that wor the word was God means the word came forth from God. You said you had some scriptures you wanted to talk about re related to that, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jesus himself says, uh, "The uh, I came out and proceeded forth from God." Can't Which remember. Which one is that? I'm okay, gonna okay. show you right now if I find a way to take this off of full screen, but I have no idea how to. Oh, okay. sorry, man. Are you well? You can hit escape, I think, and then go into your browser or whatever. Let me see. I okay. Yeah, this worked perfect. All right, let me get to it right now. Okay. Uh, I think he says it twice. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Here's the first one. He says this in John uh, chapter 8, verse 42. And since okay. we're on the KJV, I'll just read it from the KJV. Um, it says, Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither mm -hmm. came I of myself, but he sent me. Okay. And it's interesting, he says, for I proceeded forth and came from God, right? Because, I mean, proceeding forth and coming from God looks like, a, it, it looks like it can mean the same exact thing, but it, it looks as if it means those two things are, have it, are different. a different meaning. Um, and then here's the other one. He says it again. He says in John 16, uh, verse 27, for the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. So 16, this is 1647, you said? Uh 1627. Uh 27, okay. Uh, for the Father himself loveth you because you love me and believe that I came out from God. Okay. So, yeah, so he came out from God. So I still would say just that this is part of the sonship thing, or his humanity, you know? This is part of his humanity. Well, this is part of his dual nature, you know? It doesn't... Well, does, well, even that next verse, right? I came forth from the Father and, and am come into the world. Mm -hmm. right? So we can see, okay, well, he came forth from the Father and then am come into the world as the word is made flesh, right? The word proceeds forth from the Father then the word is made flesh. Again, mm -hmm. I leave the world and go to the Father. And right, I leave in the world is, is his ascension mm -hmm. up to the Father. That's that, that's how I read that those scriptures. Right, right. Yeah. I just I mean, I just still but it, like the, the Trinity explanation for this is that this is his human form. That's fine. That does come from the Father. Or it proceeded out from the Father, yeah. But Jesus himself. God the Son does not does not like uh, just start occur, start existing at a certain time that he actually always existed just like the Father did. Yeah, you know? that's the idea with us, right? So yeah, now, this is interesting. I don't. I'm just saying it doesn't really disprove the Trinity doctrine. But what what else were you gonna say about this idea that why why I don't understand like the word was God the word was God yeah I understand what you're saying about those other scriptures yeah but why why would I why did they lead me to think that this means the word came out from God you know it doesn't seem to say that yeah when you look at this in isolation. Right. Mm -hmm. And you don't take in because this is why we're other scriptures take in the full council scriptures. If you look at this in isolation, it's hard to reach any other conclusion than believing that the word was God. I'm in agreement with that. 
right? But it's but also this- it's also the other thing too, Dylan, is that when you re- when you talk about those, about those other scriptures like John um, John sixteen and stuff, that's talking about him on Earth and 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 in this period in history, right? But this this is about the beginning. You know, that's the thing. That's the well, important not, thing. Yeah, well, there's other ways. Well, I disagree, but there's other ways also to look at John 1.1 1, 1 and to be like, okay, well, something's not logically consistent here. For example, right, I'll, I'll, we'll try with this one. The word was God, right? Was is a, uh, is a past tense verb, right? Mm-hmm. So now we got to look at John and we got to ask him, well, John, I mean, don't you know how to use present tense, future tense, and past tense verbs? And John does know how to, and Jesus knows how to, right? Jesus would say, the hour is now and is coming, right? So he would use a present tense verb and a future tense verb. He would he understood the importance of making it clear of when, you know, something is applied or applying, right? So we look at the word was God, was is a past tense verb, right? So now we have to ask John, right? Let's say the word is God, right? Let's say the word is God. At the moment John was writing this, why would he not say the word is God? Why did he use was? Why did he use a past tense verb? Because it's like indicating that the word stopped being God, right? Why wouldn't he say the word was and is God? Yeah, okay. Don't go too far. It doesn't indicate that the word stopped being God, all right? Because what, what what he's saying is that because he's talking about this in the beginning thing and he wants to situate Jesus there, right? In the beginning, he's explaining it, uh, that, that, that he was, he was God. He was, he was God because in the beginning there was only God and the word was there as well because the word was God. That's what he's trying to make us understand. So he's talking about that, point in history or whatever so that's why he's talking with the past tense but the fact that he says the word was god means that that thing the being god is not something you could just be and then not be at another time you know he was god then because he's always god he always was and always will be you understand I agree that God can't stop being God, right? But this is why I look at this verse and I'm like, why wouldn't John say the word was and is God? Now, he just didn't feel the need to. I, that's I often the case in the Bible. It, Michael. No, 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 no. The Bible, no, the Bible, <laughs> the Bible is like that though. The Bible does not always fill in all the blanks for us, it, right? Now, one why, thing that what? Go ahead, go ahead. No, I, I agree with that, that sometimes there's we look at the scriptures and it there's there's these gaps. Mm-hmm. Right. But I look at like Revelation, for example, which is also written by John. Right. Mm-hmm. Jesus talks about. um, um, I can't remember the scripture, but he says that which is and which is to come. Right. So now we see a a present tense and a uh, and a future tense. Right. So if he can write it in these scriptures, right, um, I'm that which was and uh, which is and which is to come. Right. We, we obviously see the, the past tense, the present tense and future tense. If it was important to write it there, why isn't it important to to write it in John 1 1? Let me try well, that. that's so it's different. Well, John 1 1 again, he's trying to set up his story of of jesus's life but he wants to begin at the very beginning of the creation to to make us understand in my opinion that he is god right now with this one let's say i I don't know which revelation scripture you're looking at but it's it's the eighth verse it's actually it's that same chapter in the eighth verse okay okay yeah uh Okay, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. The yeah. You see that which is and which was and which is to come. You see how we got the uh, the present tense and which is, which mm-hmm. was is the past tense, and then which is to come is the future tense, right? So Jesus finds it important to tell us, hey, this I'm past tense, I'm present tense, I'm future tense, and then John. Oh, no, no, this is Butler's, John talking, right? This is. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. And then John says in uh, John one one, right? He just totally forgets to put is and then wit and uh you know which will be right he doesn't say the word is god and the word will 
continue to be God or anything, right? He doesn't have well, those present and in future tense verbs. And I mean, that's, uh, that's a pretty massive error if he was trying no, to. No, 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 it's not an error. It's not an error. It's not an error because it's not, it's not an error because it's like, it's a different thing, right? He's here, he's trying to say, first he quotes, he's quoting Jesus, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord. Which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. So he's trying to here. He's trying to explain who's who's doing this speaking. You know, this is the first time Jesus speaks in the book, as I recall. Yes. So he's trying to explain to us who's doing this speaking. He tells us this so that it gives us a better idea of who it is that said these words: "I am Alpha and Omega." So here it serves that purpose. Right in John one, here here he's saying he he's trying to explain. I mean, in my opinion again, he's trying to explain to us that Jesus is God. Okay, and how does he do that? He's trying to say that from the beginning, Jesus was the Word. The Word was with God in the very beginning, and we know in the beginning there was only God there. And then he says, and the Word was God. Because to make us understand that the Word and God are one, as Jesus does say as well. But what, what, were you, what are you thinking? What do you think? You, you don't think it's important for him to say the Word was and is God? Because like somebody can read this and think, oh, did God stop being God here? Like I can read this and easily come to that conclusion. The Word was God. What do you mean was? Did he stop? Like I, I, John was, he was an intelligent man. He was very, 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 sure. anointed. like, I, I can't see him to say that the word is God. I can't see him not adding that in saying the word was and is God. I, I Why? Can't. Why does he have to say that? I don't understand. Because you, know, you see you know the what's... word was God and it's only a, a past tense because uh, you can read this. And come to the implication, if you don't believe in a trinity, you can easily read this and think to yourself, God stopped being God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, this is one of those things where, where things in the Bible are not always spelled out as clearly as we'd like. But I don't think he needs to make that make that statement here. He's just trying to say that... He's trying to make us understand that Jesus is God, right? But without, he, I don't know. The, the, I don't know if there's this need to specify all those things here necessarily, especially it since it's kind of poetic, right? The the language he's using is kind of poetic. That's why he's. I mean, this is like well, such well, a beautifully Jesus, structured verse. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Well, well, Jesus found it necessary to use past, present, and future tense. And we saw that in Revelation, uh, that, that eighth verse. He found it necessary to say that I am which is and which was and which is to come. So if Jesus found it necessary to make sure that past, present, and future tense verbs are all included, I, I don't see why John didn't think it was important enough. Well, in well, Jesus, it's a different purpose, right? Here, here, the purpose, John's purpose, is to tell the story of Jesus's life in this book. That's John's purpose, right? And in this beginning, like prologue, right? That, that his purpose seems to be to make us understand Christ's divinity, among other things, right? Now, with this story now in Revelation, what is Jesus doing? He's appearing to John in a vision. And he's telling John, I am this. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. He actually doesn't say this part about which is, which was, and which is to come. That's John saying that. You know, oh. Jesus doesn't even say that. Jesus just says the beginning and the ending, right? John fills this in. Why did John fill this sin? We could debate that as well. That's probably a whole other long debate, but I would say he's just trying to make it under make us understand that Jesus is he he is now, he exists, he's alive. He was like he was here with us at one point on the earth and he will come back to us here again on the earth. But that he is the almighty. Look what he says, the almighty who does he say that about, <laughs> other than God, you know? 
Who well, who would that, he describe that 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 word? Yeah, but he can bear those titles because the Father gave him all power and authority in heaven and on earth. So, well, that's different than the all uh, the Almighty. Like he the has, fact that he has he has all, all authority. He has all authority and power, and all things are under his feet. Yeah, true enough. But that doesn't make him the Almighty. The Almighty. Nah, like so. Let's say, let's say God. God is the Almighty, right? We we understand that. God is the Almighty, and He gives His power to to Jesus. Does that make Jesus the Almighty if He gives Him the power? Yeah. Let's just say Jesus is just a man. How does it make Him the Almighty? The Almighty. The, this is the, like just giving someone the power. They might ha they might have the power and the might of god but it doesn't make them the almighty the almighty is something we only call god i mean especially in the old testament el shaddai they, they called him the almighty well the almighty is a title given to whoever has i think as it is in the word uh all might right all power and authority and jesus has all power not some power and authority he has all power and authority therefore he can be called the almighty he has it because it was given to him by the Almighty, right? That's the idea. Right? Yeah. So now Jesus is the Almighty. So now he's the Almighty. So then, so there's two Almighties now. Uh, two can bear, they can bear the same title. That's fine, right? Everything that the Son has, the Father has, right? Everything that the yeah, they. But they don't bear the same Father. titles. The one's the Father, one's the Son, right? They don't. They they all that he has is 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 his. All that God has is Jesus's, but they don't bear the same title. No, one's, they don't. One's the Father, one's the Son, right? Or one's the yeah, that's one's... fine. But even then, Jesus is called Everlasting Father. So even in a sense, he does get that title of being a father as well. He's just not God the Father. He's just not. He's God. not God the Father, right? He's the, so they don't have the same title. He he has this title of the Everlasting Father. Okay, we're not, we're not sure. Exactly well, God the Father is not really a title. He, God the Father, it's Jehovah. It's 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 a being. That's the only thing. Jesus isn't the being of Jehovah. Right? The, I would say the only thing that Jesus isn't mm. is is the almighty is literally the almighty creator. Right? And obviously that's where we disagree, right? Because you believe that Jesus created all things. I believe everything was created through Jesus, right? Mm. And there is a distinction between those two things. Um, right, 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 right. Well, then, but that that takes us back to First John again. All things were made by Him. Without Him, was not anything made that was made. So, okay, you're saying this is through Him. This is not by Him, but this is through Him, right? Yes. Yes. So, okay. Here's here's the here's the best analogy I can think of to mm -hmm. help you understand it. God the Father is the painter, and then Jesus Christ is the paintbrush. That's the mm -hmm. best way. Sure, I can, sure, sure. I can no, I get it. I get it. Through him, through him, made through him. So, yes. all right. So, like, let's let's look at some of those. I guess there's Colossians. Uh, it might be in the second chapter, right? Pretty sure. I don't know. I can't I remember. I think I know that. what you're talking. Yeah, I think it's in the second chapter, right? Because Paul talks about it, correct? Yeah. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Hang on. There is, I think it's in this one here. For for by him, for by him were all things created that are in heaven. This is 116. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Mm -hmm. so he's before all things what what is before all things only god uh well i'd say god and his word okay but then so wait if so you're saying jesus is the word which came this came like from God, right? So you're saying that that there was something before Jesus 
that there was something before him. There was the father was before him. Yeah, because I believe then... yeah, a father must come before the son, right? A son cannot come at the same time or before a father, because then a son isn't a son. Doesn't right? A son must come well after. it's a little bit it's a little bit different in their in in our understanding of the Trinity, it's like they they're one being, they're one essential they're in essence one being right but there's three persons yeah yeah but so i don't three persons yeah the trinitarians okay, yeah. that mm -hmm. they'll equate essence with being and i reject that i don't mm -hmm. believe that essence is i don't believe that essence and being right or, or substance and being whatever we want to call that essence i don't think those are linked to being i believe being is linked to to being an observer to having consciousness that's what I believe a being is. A being. So you're saying a being, uh, uh, like in order to be, one must have consciousness. I believe a being is an observer. That would be that would be the best way for me to describe a being. A being has to be an observer. But what about a child in the womb? That's a being, right? Uh in the womb. I I don't know. I can't remember being in the womb, so I have no <laughs> idea. But is it a being like, I mean, if you look at a woman with who's pregnant and she, she's nine months pregnant, the, the thing's about to pop off, right? Um, isn't that a being in her stomach? I, I would say if she's nine months pregnant, you know, mm -hmm. the, the birth is imminent. Yeah. There, she's that, that child is probably, a, that child is probably an observer. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a being. But what, what, but it can't observe anything, right? It's like uh, unconscious. It can't observe anything, right? It's unconscious. Well, it well, does observing, is that dependent on whether or not you're conscious that you're observing something, right? Cause then we can Doesn't start it? getting into like animals and stuff like that, right? Well, you know, our animals, uh, you know, do animals they have beings, that awareness, right? huh? Animals are beings, right? Aren't they? I, I would say animals are observers, yes. But I don't know if being an observer is dependent on whether or not you have this uh, this degree of awareness, right? Because obviously you and I are significantly smarter than a goldfish, right? Mm -hmm. It's not even close. But we could say that a goldfish is an observer. Now, if they're actually able to take in everything that, that – if that goldfish is able to take in what it's witnessing, I would probably disagree I would say mm -hmm. I don't think a gold. I think a goldfish has the attention span of like a a, a second, and then it probably forgets everything it just saw, mm -hmm. right? But I but we could say that a goldfish is an observer. Okay. So what about so some some like single celled organism? That's not a being to you. Ah, uh, a single celled organism. Like a bacteria. I don't know. That's a good question. I really don't know. Mm -hmm. I really don't know. It's tough to say that, right? I, I it, It's tough to answer that to say if a single celled organism is a being. I, I just don't know. I can't answer that. That's pretty all tough. Right, all right. Let's get back to this thing then. For yeah. by him were all things created. What does that mean? Uh, all things were created by. Well, again, I perceive by as, as meaning through. And then uh, for him, yeah, all things were created for his word. He's mm -hmm. in the bosom of the father. He's he, he the father loves the son, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is for the son, right? We can look at Romans eight twenty eight, right? All things are, uh, um, all things work together for the good for those who love him, for those who are called according to his purpose, right? He loved the father loves his son, mm -hmm. right? So everything was created for his son. All things were created for him, yeah, but it's by him as well. That's the thing. Now, when you say through, it's, it's similar to what you said in John 1. Yeah, You're just I, saying that this it's word... It's the same thing. By means through, correct. Yeah. yeah. But that's the thing. So when we read this, like, there's most people reading this in English do not assume that this means created through him. I or agree with Through you. him were the, yeah. all things created. So yeah, I what what would lead me now to make that to make that conclusion that you're making about that, that it means word? through? Yeah, you just have to take the full counsel of scriptures. That's all really right, so. The can, way. All right, so give me some more scriptures so we could consult to 
Well, well, Jesus Christ has, well, Jesus Christ has a God. Jesus Christ has a God. Yes, that's true. But we're, but we're explaining that the Trinity, the Trinity explanation is that it's because he's in his human humanity. He has a God. Yeah. Yes. And I, and he says it in revelation. What does he say there? Uh, it's in revelation chapter three, verse 12. I, uh, can't, I don't know the whole verse by heart, but he makes that's it. Okay. I'll get it. Yeah. While he's seated at the right hand of the father, he has a God. Him that overcometh, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God? Right, right, okay. And he shall be, he shall go no more out. Yeah, that's fine. This is, again, this is just, to me, this is just him as the son saying this. The, the son in his human form, in his humanity, is saying this. But he's seated at the right hand of the Father while he says that. He's saying that while he's he still... has all power and authority, that's the thing. While he has all power and authority, he's still mm -hmm. saying, "My God." So why is yeah? That? Because because he still he still has his his human form. Like he still he never abandoned his humanity when he died, you know, or when he rose again. I, he never I, left I that define behind. That we got to define that. Never abandoned his humanity because I don't know if I agree with that. Well, he's okay, he's he's, a, he's in a heavenly place now. You see, at the right hand of the Father, he's. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, yeah, that's true. But he's, so what, he's does humanity like entail? what does humanity entail? Well, it seems to entail at least partly the physical body that we exist in, right? And that's he never left that. Well, he has a new one. It's a it's a perfected one. It seems to be his same body was perfected. His same body because he still got the wounds on his hands. He still got the the wound in his side. It's a new body though. Right, because we see in the last chapter of John, uh, mm -hmm. John says, "Oh, it's the Lord on the beach." Right, and then when they all get to the beach, um, they says nobody dared ask who he was, mm -hmm. in fear, knowing that it was the Lord. So why would that be written? Why would they even have to ask who he is if they can all just recognize and know that hey, this is the Lord Jesus Christ? It's because he had a different appearance, right? And it's also why Mary Magdalene didn't recognize. Oh, him. he didn't have an appearance. Wait, wait, hold on. Let's see. Let's let's make sure about that now. Uh, yeah. John 21. Yeah. Okay. It's around the 12th verse around there. Yeah. All right, good. Jesus right said, come and die. Oh. None of them disciples just asking who art thou, knowing it was, knowing that it was the Lord. So they know, no, they know it's him. Yeah, but they knew it was him because of, because internally, right? Because of the spirit. They, they obviously like this wouldn't have to be ran if Jesus Christ appeared to them you know, as he did during his earthly ministry, why would they have to ask who that man was? They know, hey, this is obviously the Lord, right? So he took on it. He had a different appearance. Oh, uh, uh, well, I don't know. You may be kind of, you're kind of assuming some things there that aren't in the text. Now, I'm, I'm, not, just, I'm, just, well, I'm just, be careful. Why I'm would, just saying, that's why, fine. Why, would, why would they say that? Why would they say that? Now, they may say that because, for example, he died, right? They all know he died. <laughs> you know what I mean? So then they're like, okay, well, we know he's dead, but here he is right in front of us. So they might want to think to ask, hey, wait a minute, aren't you dead? Or who are you? What? Why are you? How? Are, if you're dead, how can you be here? But they said they don't. They don't dare ask him because they know who it is. You know, and uh, also because is it's. Go ahead. Go ahead. This is the third time he appears to them. Yeah, yeah, but this is the thing. So he uh, already did before. No, no, no. It's weird with the <laughs> with their. No, no, no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about Jesus's appearances, right? Like, it's very strange the way he appears to them. Sometimes he appears to them, and then they they seem to almost forget it. Sometimes he appears to them, like Peter. He appeared to Peter, right? Or he was there with them. They were all there in chapter twenty here. They're all there. And actually, this is the second time, at least minimum, that he appeared to them. Because first he appeared to them and Thomas wasn't there. Then he appeared to them again and Thomas was there. And he's telling them all these things. Um, and he tells them, well, I guess he doesn't tell them that much. Blessed thou, art, thou hast seen me. 
But then look, they, they, they saw Christ risen. They saw him twice at least, minimum, right? Peter, has, Peter is well aware of this. But yet, he still wants to go fishing now. He doesn't get it yet. He still doesn't get it. He doesn't understand what his mission is or what he's supposed to do. And then even when, the, even when they're there getting the fish, it's only when, it's only when uh, John says to him, Therefore, the disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, it is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, only then does he realize it's Jesus, you know? And he goes and he swims over there, right? And then they eat. But what I'm saying is like, they're, they're, it's like very difficult for these guys to pick up what's happening here and what's, re what's, really, what's really going on. They still don't quite get it. Even though Jesus told them many times that he was going to die and rise again, after he died, they didn't they didn't anticipate that he would rise again until until he actually did and it appeared to them. Only then did they start to kind of clue in, you know. Yeah. And even well, then, yeah, I don't disagree with that. But the claim here is that Jesus Christ had a different appearance. That's what the claim is. And yeah, right. And I'm saying, why would I assume that from anything here? And you're saying that this this thing this this line twelfth verse twelfth. Oh, uh, the twelfth, right? So. Yeah. He's saying this line, because they durst not ask him, who are you? Who are you? Yeah. So they're, 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 they don't, they don't want to ask him, who are you? Yeah. Knowing that it's him. So from this, I'm supposed to assume that he looked different? Why? Yes. Well, because why would that be written? Why, why would the disciples bother asking who that is? They did it. Why, why would they... No, it says none of the disciples durst ask him, "Who art thou?" Knowing that it was the Lord, why would why would that have to be written? Why is that even mentioned? Because they're saying because they're like, right? If I know what like, you look like right now, Michael, right, mm -hmm. and I go out fishing and I see you on the beach, I don't have to write. If I'm gonna write a, a book about it, I don't have to write. You know, I didn't dare ask Michael who he was, knowing that it was Michael. I wouldn't write that yeah. unless I saw a man, right, who I felt was you, but I wasn't sure if that was actually you. Right? So he had a different appearance on that beach. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Like, I mean, that's a, big, uh, that's a big leap of logic is what I'm trying it's, to say. You, 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 should, you should think it is. Of course it is. You're taking, okay, you're saying, you're saying, I'm not trying to, like, I'm not trying to, Put you down or anything. I'm just That's saying, right? Don't worry about it, bro. You're okay, good. but this is so the so the what we know from this passage is that Jesus is telling them to come and eat, mm -hmm. and then and then none of them none of them dared ask him, "Who is he?" And they know it's the Lord, right? So they're they're not they're scared to ask him, "Who are you?" And they know it's him. And from yeah. those two things, you're drawing the conclusion that he looks different. Well, that he has those two things, those two things don't lead directly to the assumption that he looks different. You know, it well, could be that he, it's like he looks the same, but then it's like it's hard to understand. Like, how does this man who looks the same as our Lord? How is he standing here when we know our Lord is dead? Right. That's the kind of thing. I assume that's why they were asking him that or something. It's kind of weird. We don't know why he why he wrote that, right? But we're we could come up with a few theories. I don't think the theory that Jesus looked different is is like just given here, you know? It's like Well, we, that we theory that yeah, that theory that wow, this is crazy. It's actually the Lord. That mm -hmm. would that theory would work if he mm -hmm. didn't already appear to them twice. Right. Mm -hmm. If this was his first time appearing onto them mm -hmm. and they were shocked, like, like, no way, that's our Lord resurrected. Right. But he already appeared to them. So they already saw him before uh, resurrected. Mm -hmm. Right. So if they already saw him before. So then, so then let's just say, let's just say we don't have a good theory as to why, why John wrote that. But I, what I, what I'm saying to you is the, the well, idea that he I looks did. different. Because he looks different? Is that what you're that saying? That is why. Yeah, that's why he wrote it. <laughs> maybe, that's why. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe. 
I don't, I'll, I'm just saying, that's not straight out of the text, but let's leave that aside for now <laughs> as well, okay? Because the, the, we're, we're getting away from our, from our main fun. point, <laughs> <laughs> which is, okay, what's our main point here now? Yeah, the original um, point was that he, we we're talking about how Jesus has a God. You, you said that, um, that still entails. The by, the by, the, oh, okay. No, but I was saying, I was saying the whole, the created by him business. And oh, then, we were back there. Okay. Wasn't it? Or was it, I don't know. Or the word was, was God or. It was one of the two. I think it was entailing the humanity. What, what actually. Cause, oh yeah. Cause you said that while he's seated at the right hand of the father he still has like this, this humanity to him. Right. And then I asked, okay, well, what entails his humanity? And then that's when you said, uh, ah, right, his body. Right, right. So, and then that's when we got into the conversation about the body. Okay, right. So okay. we can go back to the question. I mean, what, like, what is this humanity that Jesus Christ is still maintaining while he's seated at the right hand of the father? Right, right. Okay. Well, all right. Let's look at this thing. So here we know that we know from John chapter 20 that Jesus still has his wounds in his in his body. Okay. He still has the wounds in his hands and the wounds in his and the wounds in his side. That's why he was telling Thomas reach hither thy finger, right? Because he still has those things. And um so that's one reason why we would think he's still retaining his kind of human form, his human, his humanity. Um, well, is that what reason humanity is, is? Is that what, like, is, is him having that same body, right? Now, let's just say it's glorified. It's a more glorified spiritual body, right? Because he's risen from the dead, right? Mm. He still has these, you know, gashes in him, all these cuts on him. Mm. He still has that. Is him having that body or, or having those marks, those scars from him being crucified, is that him still holding on to humanity? It, it, cause... Well, well, you know what, too? Other things are, are similar like this here. He, he's sitting there eating with them, right? He's eating. Yeah. Does a spirit, does a spirit eat, you know, does a oh, spirit. He, he has, yeah. And I was talking about this with somebody else. Like he definitely has like this sort of hybrid spiritual slash physical body physical because we see him he eats the fish mm. and then spiritual because he literally vanishes out of thin air in front of people right. so right, it's got to right. be like this hybrid of a, of a spiritual slash physical body or, right. or or that's what that's what he's calling the perfected the perfection like that's the thing because we're supposed to be perfected when we become like him right when we that's the idea, right? After we die, we're going to become like him, right? Um, Paul writes about that. I can't remember exactly where, but he writes that we will be like him. And so what does like him mean? Yeah, but that's when we're raised from the dead, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when that is. But what I'm saying is, so if we're going to be like him, that's what it is. We're still going to be human, but we're going to be like him. So like him is this perfected nature. He's perfect. Are we, are we still human? And we'll, oh, when we're when we're raised from the dead, yeah, maybe maybe not. Maybe it's something else. I don't know. I would say it is. I would say they're still human. We're still basically human. I don't just know. not, just no longer with this with this corruptible flesh. Like our flesh now is corruptible, but in time we will be incorruptible, right? I, I agree that we'll have the incorruptible bodies. I'm in agreement with that, but I don't know if we'd be. I don't know if we'd be considered human, right? Because he does say that we'd be like the angels, right? Now, okay. how do we perceive that? Are we humans like angels? Are we just a different, I guess, species, if we want to call it all together? I don't know if, you know, I don't have the answer to that, but I don't know. I wouldn't be quick to say that we're still going to be human. I wouldn't say that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we, well, whatever we, whatever he is, that's what we'll be like. So yeah, whatever that is, that. so he is, I guess he's not, certainly not human in the way we are anymore. That's certainly true. So whatever he is now, that's what we're going to be. And whatever that is, that thing that he is now, it can appear and disappear from wherever he wants to be. And he eats food. Okay. 
So those are two things that, that we know about him now. And he speaks. He yeah. um he sits down and he stands up. He go he walks he like, you know, he talks yeah. just like just like us, right? So what else could we say about him? I don't know. It does seem pretty human. It's not like it's not like the way God the Father is, the way we perceive him, like something so far beyond us, right? He's something yeah. like us, but but perfect now. Like not no longer yeah. You know, maybe no longer suffering pain, no longer uh, needing, um, maybe he doesn't need food anymore, you know, he just, he eats it because he enjoys it kind of thing. I'm not too sure, yeah. you know, Yeah. but that's like, that's what we can say about what, what he is now. It does seem pretty human, but what do you mean by it's not human? It's something like alien to humans or, or it's just like something beyond human or what is it? I would say I, I think we're just like glorified spiritual beings. I don't know if we'd still be called humans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, because mm -hmm. if if human is if human can only be attributed to flesh and blood, right? If you need flesh and blood in order to be human, and flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven, mm -hmm. right? Then there isn't flesh and blood up there. Right. And if we need flesh and blood in order to be classified as a human, then we literally cannot be humans up there. We have to be something else. Mm. Yeah. OK, interesting. I don't know. Yeah, that's interesting that that phrase flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. I wouldn't say that that necessarily means that. Uh, that we don't we, that we're somehow no longer having any flesh or blood, but I guess it's like. I mean, that flesh, that flesh is talking about this, like the flesh, right? The flesh, Paul uses that word flesh in a, in a lot of different ways, right? Sometimes it's like our human flesh, but it's also like the sinful nature sometimes, you know? Yeah, I believe like that, the body right? can be very similar to what our flesh now is. You know, right, like, right. It can still be like this, I guess, this sort of physical... Uh, body to us but uh i just don't know if it's flesh like like the flesh we have right now right. yeah these answers yeah these are just answers i don't have right now but okay so all right well all right let's get back to this thing of all things are made by him you said you had some scriptures maybe that we could look at that would give me a another way of understanding that phrase but what what, what do you got well, by seeing that by means through. Well, that's why I went to Jesus uh, having a God, right? That's why I went to him because it's like, okay, well, if we accept that Jesus has a God, then he can't be the most high God, right? Because that's really, that's the biggest thing to get. That That's really like the what I'm trying to convince you on, that Jesus Christ is not the most high God and that the most mm -hmm. high God is the father, right? Because if you can, if you can believe that the father alone is the most high God, and that mm -hmm. the son is under him and subordinate to him. Now mm -hmm. you can get this, this image of two separate beings. Now you can get mm -hmm. this, the father who is a separate being and the son who is a separate being. And now you can see, okay, the father created everything through his son, right? Mm -hmm. The only way for you to interpret by his meaning through is for you to understand that the father and the son are two separate beings, beings, mm -hmm. not persons, right. beings. Right. Because you already believe that they're two separate persons, which is good. But you got to believe that they're two separate beings now. You got to believe that they're two separate observers. Yeah. Well, why, why does this like, let's say he is, he calls the father, my God. Right. Yeah. I mean, that to me is consistent with the idea that they are the same being, but different persons, you know? So Jesus can refer to the Father as my God because they are separate persons, but they're still the same being, you know? But you're saying, oh, I guess you're saying the God thing, capital G, God is the being. I can't, I can't yeah, when I, like when I read this, him that overcometh while making the pillar, uh, make a pillar in the temple of my God, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is talking about the Father, Jehovah. That's, when I read that, that's what I see, right? Mm -hmm. So... And then we're, okay. that's what it is. Uh, 
trying to create that distinction between Jesus and Jehovah, not just in person, but in being as well. Mm -hmm. You know what it is? It's like, because there, I mean, there are, there are other phrases I could think of too, which is similar to this and it'll give your, your argument more strength, but I still think that all these things, they, they all can kind of be solved by the, the, the idea in the Trinity that, it's like there are three there are three persons in one being now it's something that because to, for for two different persons even just two certainly three to exist in one being is it's something that our logical brain can't really comprehend right it's something that's, that's why like, that's why i i had to find look for the answer because it's it's confusing and god's mm -hmm. not the author of confusion right so i'm trying well, to think Oh, oh, I know what you're saying. Now, now, God's not the author of confusion. That's true. But there are some things that can be difficult to understand in the scripture. I agree right? with that. I definitely agree so, with that. Right? But, well, let's so look now, at being, right? Let's look at being in person, right? Uh, I associate being with being an observer, mm -hmm. right? Not necessarily how it doesn't matter if you have a, a massive amount of awareness or discernment or, mm -hmm. or none at all. If you're an observer, you're an observer. That's how I associate being, right? So can we can we spot anywhere else in creation where there is one being existing as multiple persons? Yeah, yeah I don't think that we can, but that's the thing. It's God, so that's why he might be unique in that regard. Because he is God. And what's interesting about it, what 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 one reason why we we might think that this is true is because God is like God is always he he doesn't need anything, right? He everything he has or rather there is nothing that he needs, okay? But so but for some reason like he's always in relation to something. Like God is always like in relation to us, in relation to the animals or he's always in relation. But before there was a creation, who was he in relation to? You know? And so so, if we understand that there's these three beings, three persons in the being of God, they have a relationship among themselves. That's why they are perfect within themselves. They can just have the three of them together in the in the Godhead, and they have that relationship always. They are always in in a community even before the creation. You know, that's why the the fact that we now have families, communities and relationships is based on their is their original relationship that they had all the other relationships that we have in our creation that in the creation we exist in is because of their relationship that they had you know that's the pattern there you know the relationships or what do you think tell, tell me i have a quote do you think the father uh you know the father bears witness right you would agree mm -hmm. with that yeah. And you believe the sun bears witness? Sure. Yeah. And the spirit. Yeah. And the spirit. Amen. Do you think so? The father is how many consciousnesses do you think the father has? Uh, I don't know. That's interesting. It might be because it's infinite too, right? His consciousness is infinite. So it might, it might have. It might take on like, yeah, a consciousness here and a consciousness there, or it might be that he's got one, one consciousness that's perfect and eternal and, and just everywhere. And it could be I, in, I, That's in what infinite, I believe. You know? I believe yeah. he has one consciousness. I believe the son also has his own consciousness. He's his own. Right. I believe the father and the son are their own separate observers. That's what yeah, I believe. Okay. Yeah, I would agree uh, with that. Yeah. They're persons, yeah. If, so I mean, that's even in my system. Relate, no, I don't relate that to person. I relate that. No, to I know people. that's fine. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah, I get it. I get what you're saying, but I'm just saying that I would agree with that much that they are separate consciousnesses, and also the Holy Spirit is a separate conscience. I agree. Or consciousness. Yeah, so, I agree. Right. So okay. Right. So if Jesus Christ has his own consciousness, right? If he's his own observer. Jesus has his own will. He has a separate will from the Father, right? We see it while he's praying in the garden. He right. says, Father, if it's possible, you know, let this cup pass from me. 
but nevertheless, um, not my will be done, but thy will be done. Right. So we acknowledge, we, he acknowledges that he has his own will. We see what his will is, right. His will is that the cup passes from him and that he's not crucified, mm -hmm. but ultimately he yields over and he says, not my will be done, but thy will be done. So he prays that the father's will is done over his own. Right. Um, Right. So now we have to ask, OK, well, if it's if they're the same being. Why does this being have two wills? Why is, he, have, why is he double minded? Yeah, that's the thing. Now, now, double minded, that's a that's a bit of a stretch. Right? I would just say, <laughs> but hear, hear what I'm saying. I, I would say, again, that's Jesus's humanity there in the garden talking. Right. That's why that's why he's so upset. That's why he wants this other thing. But his will his divine will yeah i disagree i know i know. I, I don't believe i don't believe jesus christ has a divine will i believe he mm. only, i believe there's only the will of the father and the will of the son mm. the son had his own will the father has his own will but the son chose to fulfill the father father's will so we call it a divine will but that that's not real it's actually just the father's will Right, Jesus doesn't or, have or, or it could be okay, yeah. Well, whatever. It could be that yeah, Jesus has one will, and that on earth at that moment he's his will him. was not quite the same as the father's, right? His will was to do something other than what the father wanted. That's and correct. so but then he he kind of submits himself to the father's will. Yes, he, that's uh, correct. right. So yeah, so I'm okay with that. Will. So it's not his, it's not his divine will. It's his father's will. Right. Right. That's so fine. Jesus doesn't have two wills. He has one will, right. But the father mm -hmm. was in him working right through the Holy ghost. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was the thought he said, it's not I who do the works, but it's my father in me who does the works. So it wasn't mm -hmm. even Jesus doing the works. It was actually the father working in Jesus doing the works. Jesus yeah. Said, yeah. That's true. That's true. Cause he was a man. He was a man. That's yes. the thing. So yes. as a man, he can't do miracles, right? So, so the Holy Spirit comes and empowers him and yes. the Father works through him, right? And so all that's true. All that's true. I agree with everything there. I just don't, I guess, I don't know. We're kind of all over the place. That's the problem. I guess next, maybe this is yeah. why I wanted to do the sort of the minutes and having the structure, time and stuff. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. This is a good discussion. It's good. I mean, it made me think about things definitely. Um, but I didn't want to, you know what? Okay. Look, let's, let's, let's do this, man. Let's have another, another chat about this maybe in a month or whatever, a couple months or something. And that's we talk fine. about it again. All right. We could get but into tool up too. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Actually, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. That's what I wanted to talk to you about before we, before we end this call, right? I wanted to, I wanted to talk to you about that. So because I didn't realize that you were uh, that you were it's a tulip. Yeah. But what what is it about this? Okay, the first one is T, right? The first, because I was listening to some of your stuff about it. And I think your understanding of them, those. T U L I P thing is a little bit different than what most Calvinists say, right? So tell me about T. Yeah, so T is total depravity. Total depravity is the teaching that uh, that we're all wicked, right? That's mm -hmm. that's the baseline of it, and that there's nothing. And this is just me summing up the best way I can. There's nothing in and of ourselves that we can do in order to be saved, right? So when we hear that um for most people when they hear that they think that there's this full-on negation of free will uh completely mm -hmm. right now the problem with tulip um not the problem with tulip but what makes people so hesitant or uh unable to accept those teachings is because we're all conditioned to believe that free will um is real right now when when I say, okay, well, we don't actually have free will, people will jump to the other extreme. And instead of saying that we don't have free will, they'll think, okay, so we have no will at all. And I'm like, no, don't, we don't got to jump to that extreme. There's a middle, there's a middle ground we can go to. So it's not a free will, it's a limited will, right? So it's a restricted will, right? In a, in a will that's restricted, a will that has confines placed on it, can you still call it free? Because I would say, no, you can't. 
It's like sending somebody into a, uh, to a garden, right? Like the garden of Eden and saying, Hey, you can do whatever you want within this garden. Sure, I would sure. You have a restricted free will. You can do only whatever you want within that garden, right? It's like letting yeah. people out of a prison into that courtyard. Hey, you can do anything you want. You can play basketball, lift weights, do whatever you want within those gates, right? Yeah. So that's why I don't teach that we have a free will. I teach that we have a limited will because that but way. Wait, but wait, 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 before we get off too much, the thing with, okay, the thing with total depravity, they do say, they do talk about how we're all evil and stuff. That's fine, but. The big thing with that, and there's different Calvinists will different Calvinists will, will talk about it differently, but yeah. the main thing that they all agree on is that we can't believe the gospel. That's the thing. Not just that we can't get saved or whatever. That's a little bit the, the reason why they say we can't we can't like get salvation by ourselves is because they say we cannot believe the gospel. We don't have the ability to do that. That's why a lot of them now they changed it to total inability. A lot of them will say that now instead What's of total, that, total depravity. Inability. It's the same doctrine, same exact doctrine. They're just saying that the main, the main like thing from total depravity, that doctrine is that they don't that we don't have the ability to believe the gospel unless God does something in us. You know what I'm saying? I hold a different view. Okay. Um, one that I don't see anyone. I mean, there's probably a couple of people that teach it, but I haven't seen any Calvinists teach it. I don't even want, I don't really watch people anyway, but uh, it's that we have the choice to believe. Okay. But believing doesn't mean you're drawn onto the sun. That's where I differ with people, right? And then that's where it gets into the other doctrines. That's where it gets into uh, election and predestination. So, so wait, wait, say, say that again. Wait, say that again. So yeah. we have the choice to believe. We can choose to, to believe the, the the. We can believe the gospel if we want. That's yes. What you're okay, Correct. but 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 believing does not mean you will be drawn onto the sun, right? Because here's what happens: you believe. Once you believe, people believe. Uh, people will say, "Okay." Once you believe, the Father draws you on to the Son, right? And then you know you're abiding in Christ. You're all good. That's where I. That's the point of contention. I believe that you can believe, but not be drawn onto the Son. Okay, let me show you this one. All right. So when when we believe, this is what happens. Oh, wait, sorry. When we believe. This is what happens, that we should be praised in his glory who was first trusted in Christ, in whom he also trusted. After that, ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that, ye believed, believed, right? You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So the, this is kind of one reason why people believe that well, as soon as you believe the gospel, the Holy Spirit comes and seals you. So that's like, that's the salvation. That's the uh, the moment of becoming saved. Well, yeah. well what do well, you think happens when we believe the gospel? What happens? Yeah, but what, that's why we, this is in Ephesians chapter one. This is why we could just go to the third and fourth verse and we see, okay, who's Paul writing to, right? And he's he's writing to the predestined, right? He's, he's, he's uh, uh, writing to those who were chosen uh, before the foundation of the world, see? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, what, right, so, so this tells you, wait, 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 wait. So this is, yeah, he, they were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. Yeah. So this is telling you what then? What are you saying? That this is, right, these so are the predestinated ones who are. Yeah. So when you look at that. chosen, right? Yes. Okay. And not everyone can be part of that group. Just only the chosen. Okay. Yeah. Only the chosen are, are chosen, yes. So why does it say, all right, well, let's talk about this thing. Why does it say he, that we're chosen in him? What does that mean, in him? Uh, according as he chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. um, when I see in him, I just believe we're, we're, we're chosen to be abiding in Christ, right? He's in us, we're in him. That That's... Okay, okay. Chosen yeah. us in him. See, but what it seems like... He chose us 
in him, to me that means that it's because we believed. We were in him. We're in him when we believe, right? And so he chose us in him. And what does that mean? It means that, I mean, there's a, there's a couple ways to look at it. Some people think it's because he's choosing anyone who comes to be in him. Anyone who comes to be in Christ is one of the chosen. That's the one way to look at it. So yeah. he chose, he chooses before the foundation of the world. He chooses that anyone who will be in Christ will be one of these people uh, predestinated to into the adoption. Here's That's what one I say. way. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Here's what I say. Here's those who are chosen. Those who are chosen are those who believed mm -hmm. and did not betray him. Or, or would not betray him. Because I believe that uh, Judas Iscariot is more than just a son of perdition, but he's actually an example. He's actually an example of what happens when a devil is chosen, right? A mm -hmm. devil was chosen, right? Jesus said, have I not chosen you 12 and one of you is a devil? And he ended up choosing a devil, which was Judas. And because Judas was chosen, it was so bad that when he betrayed the son of man, when he betrayed Jesus Christ, that Jesus was literally nailed to a cross due mm -hmm. to his betrayal. Mm -hmm. So this is why Judas Christ, and this is where we get into the conversation. Okay. Well, did Judas believe? And I have this debate a couple of times. Um, oh, okay. I was going to talk that. about it. I was going to talk about that because yeah, it looks like to this one, but you, you go ahead, you go ahead. What were you going to say? But yeah, Judas was a believer. There's no, 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 no. Here, let me. Well, let me yeah. give you something to think about. Maybe, maybe you'll still think that, but let's talk about it. Sure. So here he's talking to them, and some other disciples as well. But the twelve are there, and he says, uh, "But there are some of you that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him." Yeah. And then he says he goes on here at the end of the chapter. Um, it's good looking at the, that verse two, uh, John six, 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 uh, you know, screw Satan, but it says, uh, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with them right after he said that, right. A lot right. of his disciples left. Yeah. A lot of his disciples. So then he's, then he's with, there with the 12. Yep. The chosen. Yeah. Will he also go away? And, and of course, Judas is one of them, right? Then Simon Peter. Yes. And we believe you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. That includes Judas. Yeah. And then he says, Have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is the devil? Mm -hmm. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. So now, I guess you can't make the claim. Well, you know what? Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Judas is one of the twelve. He's speaking of him. One of them is the devil. And here he says, there are some of you that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and, and who should betray him. So, I, get, I mean, I like to think that this, is, that this means that whoever would betray him believe not. But no. are you saying that they don't it's two follow? It's separate, two separate groups of people. Right, that first okay. one for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not. Those are the non-believers, and then who should betray him? Those, those, those are the Judas Iscariot, and who should those betray, are the devils. And who should betray him? Interesting, yeah. interesting. Yeah, that might be true. But even if that's the case, let's say Judas did believe and betrayed him. Yeah. What then? What then? What then? Well, Judas did believe and he did betray him, and that's God showing us. Um, just the severity of, of he's shown us the severity of what it's like being intimate with the son, knowing him and then going and betraying him. It's so bad. The betrayal is so bad that you're literally nailing him to a cross. You, you are killing him. That's how, that's yeah. how bad the betrayal is. That's why God won't choose more than one devil, right? He already chose one devil. And what happened? Jesus Christ was, was killed. He was nailed to the cross because he chose the devil. Oh, you're saying, no, now you're saying, so now you're saying that because Jesus chose him, that's why he believed. Or, no, no, or no, he believed, be he believed okay, before. He believed before. 
He, he believed, believed he chose he him. chosen. He chose okay. him to fulfill the scripture. Okay. Right? He's the son of perdition. He's the sheep that was lost. Mm. Right? That's why Judas was Judas was chosen to fulfill the scripture. Okay. But he couldn't he couldn't be called a believer. It it can't be a betrayal if he didn't believe. Right? How is it a betrayal? Right? This is why Judas killed himself and the Pharisees didn't. Judas knew who Jesus was. The Pharisees didn't. They didn't care. They weren't intimate with him. Judas knew, wow, I betrayed the son of God. Um, and he knew there was no way for him to repent. And Hebrews 10, 26 confirms this. For if we willfully sin after coming to the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. Judas Iscariot, that's alluding to Judas. Judas Iscariot knew that. That's why he killed himself. Oh, it might be alluding to Judas. I don't know about that, but it's interesting. That's an interesting cross-reference you bring up. Um yeah, Hebrews 10, 26. There's season all there will remain no more sacrifice for sin. Hmm. Yeah, because he's 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 uh we're we're trotting underfoot the Son of God and counted his blood of the covenant um an unholy thing, right? That's what that is. Yeah, I mean Judas he knew he he knew. He knew there was no way for him to repent. Mm -hmm. He knew he, there was the ultimate betrayal that there ever was, ever will be. So, okay, so, so you, so you're saying that, okay, so we don't, we don't come to faith because we kind of just heard the gospel and believed it. We come to faith because God chose us. Is that what you're saying? Uh, if you define come to faith as, as, be abiding in christ and christ abiding in you i would say yes i would say it's impossible to abide in christ unless unless uh god shows you it's possible to believe it's possible to believe but believing does not mean um that you've actually been drawn onto the sun and that you're abiding in christ and that you're bearing fruits of the spirit and that you're walking by the spirit you know all the things that come with abiding in christ right so there are plenty of people that call themselves believers Right, but these guys have the most rotten fruit ever, right? Yeah. And so Yeah, I, I agree with you there. But but look at this now. He says here this is where he says this thing, abide in me and I in you. Right? Yeah. I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. So he is the vine. Correct. The branches are the are the disciples. He's talking to the eleven here. Judas has left. Yes. Okay. So he's talking to the 11. So they're all believers, right? Or would you agree? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So then they're believers, but he has to tell them to abide in him. He has to tell them to do this. If they don't, then they won't bear fruit. Yeah. If they do, then they will. Correct. So you're saying that, but why does he have to tell them if he's, if he, if he, if he's the one that decides whether we abide in him? You know what I mean? Why does he have to tell? Well, he still gives us instructions, right? He's still our Lord, mm. right? Abiding but, in but, him. When we abide in him, we're receiving instruction from the Holy Ghost, right? We don't just say we're abiding in him and then just sit on our, you know, sit on my bed all day or something. No, like I'm receiving instruction to do something. Hey, minister to this person, go do this, go do that, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Right. So abiding in him is walking in the spirit. And when you walk by the spirit of God, you don't actually know what's going to happen. Mm. Right? I've had plenty of days where I'll wake up, pray, say, hey, the evil of the day is sufficient. I know you're with me. I know you'll guide me. I have no, it's 1242 p.m. right now. I don't know what's going to happen in two hours. I don't know mm. what's going to happen in five hours and 10 hours. That's, mm. what, that's what it is being led by the spirit. You have no idea what's going to come your way. You're led by the spirit of God. See, so, so you see, but you, okay, so wait, 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 wait. hang on a second. So you're saying this abide in me thing is when God chooses you to abide in Christ. Yes. In order to abide in him, you have to be drawn onto the sun, right? If you're so, chosen, so, you are drawn onto the sun. Okay. So first thing, so where does the believe part happen? Where does that happen? The believe Believing. part happens. I mean, that that's different. That's that varies from person to person, right? I, okay. Yeah. So... 
but once but you don't you don't come to abide in him until after you believe in him right if yeah the only way first, yeah right? you can't abide in someone you don't believe in it's not possible okay so first we have to believe in him the belief part that's up to us that's the not up to god part, yes the belief part is up to us okay and then once we okay so wait and then once we believe in him now what happens does the holy ghost come yet or no uh once happening? you believe the holy ghost will only come if you're an act if you're if i mean if if you're a true believer, right, if you're really going to abide in Christ, if you're actually chosen, yes, he's going to impart his Holy Ghost onto you. And then, uh, I mean, uh, okay, okay. That's it. so we have to be a, by the Holy Ghost. So to be a true believer who's going to abide in him. And then, but then the abide in him thing was because God chose you, right? Yes, right. So there's believing, right? That's where. Uh -huh. You know, anyone can choose to believe. Mm -hmm. And then there's this transitional stage. And it's on God to draw you on to his son. It's up to okay. him. He, he, it's his choice whether or not he's going to draw you on to his son, Jesus Christ. Okay. And so when when do we start? When do we get saved? Or when, or when do we know that we're going to heaven and we're, and we're never going to go to hell? Or does that ever happen? Or When do you know when you know that you're chosen? Well, you're asking when you know it, right? When you know it is only when you know it right only okay. you know once once it's revealed to you right because i believe god reveals that he's chosen people to the person themselves like he's revealed to me that i'm chosen i believe right. if you're chosen god is going to reveal it maybe it's not today it could be tomorrow it could be a week it could be a month from i don't know when but if you are chosen i believe 100 percent. just as he revealed it to paul and to peter and to john and to the rest of the disciples okay. I, he's going to reveal to you hey you have been chosen Right. And how, did, how did he how did he reveal it to you? Sorry, if you don't mind. Um, I mean, mine. When I finally under I understood Tulip. Well, I thought I understood Tulip like a year ago. Right. Mm -hmm. But my heart was still kind of hardened um, mm -hmm. after I started praying to God more. And, and I prayed that he would soften my heart. And after I had a dream uh, where Jesus baptized me. He baptized me in my dream. Um, there was water up to my hips, and then a, a wave crashed around me, came down on me. I emerged, and I was in a dried-up seabed, and I saw a man in white walking towards me, and it was Jesus mm. Christ. And then he came mm. again in, in the next dream, the next night, and I woke mm. up in the stern of a ship, and I walk out of the stern, and I look over to my right, and there's a man standing two feet away from me looking directly at me. I'm like, this is Jesus Christ. And then he snapped me awake, just like he snapped me awake from the from the night before. Um, and this was back in January 18th of this year. And then so so understand, I was I was calling myself a believer for about a year and a half at this point. And it wasn't until a year and a half into my walk after diligently seeking him where I where he finally came to me in these dreams and uh and then from that point on is when my my walk really started to elevate and that's when he gave me a better understanding over the election over being chosen and that's when he revealed to me uh that i am chosen and it's not uh you know sometimes he'll send people to me not necessarily to minister to them every day but just put them across in my walk uh, to discuss these things and that is him drawing that is him. He's drawing these people in into understanding that they're chosen. Because while I have a bunch of people in my comments always falsely accusing me, I know there's still a few men that I've talked to where I believe in my heart. I'm like, God definitely chose this man. He's he's definitely drawing him in. I just don't know when he's going to do it. That's that's it's not for me to know. All I know is that I have to speak on what I hear, um, say what I what he wants me to say and that's it and then he you know i plant the seeds god's gonna be the one who gives the increase to that person he's gonna be the one that opens up their eyes and their ears and gives them the understanding opens up their heart all these things um you know that's how it is so that's you gotta how be careful about this i mean my advice just to be careful about this way of thinking where it's like god chose me so now my thoughts my doctrines are are from him you know what i mean because we don't know sometimes we might think something that's not quite right 
but we if we assume that it's from God, we're going to start teaching our wrong thoughts as if they were from God, you know? That everything has to be checked with the Bible, of course, right? Well, that's or, why, or, yeah, that's why we have the Holy Ghost, right? He said he will guide us into all truth, right? So if I'm in error, at mm -hmm. some point or another, I'm going to be corrected on it at some point or another. Otherwise, Jesus is a liar and the Holy Ghost doesn't lead us into all truth, right? Right, either he's lying or he's telling the truth. If he's telling the truth, then that means no. even, if I'm, that means even well, if I'm sharing false doctrine at some point, it's... The truth will be revealed. Uh, yeah, but that, no, no, no. But this is the thing. So it's like it'll lead us into all truth, but not that everything we think or know is the truth. That's not what he said, right? He said that it will lead us into all truth. Yeah, amen. So what does that exactly mean? Now it could be in a, a number of things, but it doesn't mean that everything we say out of our mouth is the word of God or 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 correct doctrine right so i agree so we gotta be very careful there I'm i'll just sure. actually i'll just leave that thought with you okay because i i do have to run now but like i will leave that thought with you just to be very careful right about what you're gonna think is from god and what's what's actually from god because we know what's from god is the book is the book i would i would i would if i were you i know i notice you read the king james I would trust that book. That's my Bible that I trust as a, as from God, you know. But you can trust whatever Bible you want. If you want to go into the Greek and stuff like that, we could do that. Listen, we got to trust the Holy Ghost first and mm -hmm. the Scriptures second. The Scriptures are holy. The Scriptures are true. That's mm -hmm. not what I'm, I'm – I, I am not against the Scriptures at all. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Truth that comes into the, into the true believers – He's going to guide us into all truth. He's going to give us truths yeah. that are explicitly stated for us within those scriptures. Oh, whoa, whoa, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now we got a whole new other thing. Yeah. That's a, I'm, that's... Not so, I'm not sola scriptura. I'm not scripture alone. Oh, okay, okay, not, okay, not. okay. Am, so what, what else beyond scripture alone are you getting your source of theology from? Like, or what, else, what are the sources? Just the Holy, Just the Holy Ghost. Ghost. Either the Holy Ghost. Well, that's the thing. So now, I mean, it's the, the danger of it is that you don't, like, I mean, you could say, you, you could tell yourself something is from the I Holy have Ghost. It, but not actually yeah. have it, correct. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, or you might just be like, maybe you have it, but... Like not everything in your mind is yeah 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 are yeah. you misinterpreting it or something like that right so we got to be careful Michael, right there is no way for us to know except literally except through the whole as funny as ironic as ironic as that might sound it's literally only through the holy ghost that so we, we can, can know if we're actually under exactly that's literally well, the only way well we can use the scripture too i mean the scripture is you're only going to understand the scripture with the holy ghost that's the truth 100%, 100%. but but to to like just to show other people and to show within the community whatever yeah. we can show okay this is what the bible says so that's why i say that right now i don't know i wish we had more time brother maybe next time that's fine brother i'm sure i'm pretty confident the lord will lead another conversation and uh, yeah 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 for sure we say that so so yeah, all right i'm pleasant. listening uh, yeah it's been a good good conversation i'm glad we weren't we weren't we didn't rip each other's heads off or anything so. <laughs> <laughs> no, i knew i knew it wouldn't be like that i knew i knew we would have a good conversation you're Amen. a good guy man Amen. so don't worry but but i do think i do still worry about you dylan like and i'm praying for you i think you're a little bit off of some of these things but I, I don't know if we reached anything certain today, but keep thinking about these things, all right? And I'm going to keep thinking yeah. about these things. I take you seriously. I'm not dismissing anything you're yeah. saying, right? So Listen, you pray for me and I'll pray for you, right? right. Let, God, let, let, every, let God be true and every man a liar. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. All right. All right. Talk to you soon, brother. Yep. God all bless right. you, man. God bless you, man.